So who thought that we were gonna come back here, huh? If I didn't expressly tell you and you say you did, you're probably lying, just saying. No offense. So yes, it's time. We're gonna talk about Veggie Tales Abridged because a lot of you out there don't really know what this is. I don't blame you. If you look it up today, you're not really gonna find any of the episodes, and that is my doing. Entirely my doing. We're gonna take a look at this crazy, insane, poorly made web series for one reason and one reason only. Because I made it. Yes, it's my fault. All my fault. I'm the one to blame. I created this thing, and it grew up to be a monster. And I'm gonna tell you how that happened. We're gonna go through the entire history of the entire show, and I'm gonna review each and every episode. You might be thinking that I'm extremely biased because obviously this is my creation, but that's not exactly true given the fact that I don't like this show. Yeah, I made it, I don't like it. You'll find out why very soon. So strap in everybody because this is definitely gonna be a long one. If you thought the Annoying Orange episode last week was painful, you ain't seen nothing yet. Time to jump down the VeggieTales abridged rabbit hole. So first things first, I came up with this idea in early 2015. See, I was going to high school at the time and I haven't given VeggieTales a second thought. Given the fact that I was in a private school, when we were younger they would always show us VeggieTales episodes because, well, what else are you gonna show the kids? Bible Man? No way. Not gonna happen. But naturally, as we got older, they stopped showing us the videos, and I stopped thinking about VeggieTales entirely. Until one day, I decided to go back to watching it, and surprise, surprise, I ended up really liking it. I fell in love with the characters all over again, I was charmed by the humor, and, for the first time in my entire life, I figured out how VeggieTales got created. You know, at first being the passion project of three guys working in a basement in Illinois, and then it just blew up out of control, went bankrupt, and then got bought by all these guys. So naturally, with my newfound interest, I decided to make some VeggieTales-related content. I didn't really know what I was going to do, except for one thing. I knew that I was gonna make VeggieTales-themed reviews, and those ended up becoming really popular. Yeah, I didn't have the idea for VeggieTales Abridged for a little while. That is until I got to thinking. This VeggieTales month idea I had on my old channel was pretty fun, and if I decided to keep doing more of that, I needed a mainstay series. Obviously, with my incredible old reviews, those had to be kept neutral. I could review whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted, and suck while doing it, although that's mostly from a hindsight perspective. So I got to thinking, you know what's not popular anymore but I could still do anyways? A bridge series! Yeah, you remember those. Pokemon Bridge, Dragon Ball Z Abridged, I'm sure there's others out there. And I thought, hey, why not give it a shot? I'll make a pilot and see what people think. And then when I got to writing the pilot, I decided to write two more episodes, and I decided, yeah, okay. I don't really care what people think, I'm just gonna keep doing this. Throughout the week that I was preparing for those first original three episodes, I was planning the entire thing out. The whole thing was gonna be crazy, and silly, and wacky. But then in the end, it was gonna turn really dark, all wrapping up with a bittersweet ending story. And yeah, that stayed true to the very end. I never lost sight of that. So I didn't know about the show at the time, but I guess the best comparison I could make is Moral Oral. Moral Oral started off as this very silly comedy-based show and then got really, really dark. Obviously it was never gonna be like that, but it wasn't gonna stay random and silly forever. It was gonna start that way though, and that's how everybody got introduced to VeggieTales Abridged, kind of, sort of, with episode 1, Take 38.5. For those of you who don't know, Take 38 was an original test slash promo of VeggieTales, and things are very, very different from the final product. For example, Larry sounds like this. Hey Bob, have, have you seen my plastic wind-up lobster? Not now. <laughs> so, if I'm being honest, the whole thing was just kind of ripping on the original. Not in a negative way or anything, I do like the test and I did at the time. But it was more of, hey, let's take that and just make it a little weird. And I do mean a little because not much really happens. There's a fire that's poorly edited in. There's the infamous money joke. Hey, Bob, where's my money? Not now. 
Yes, now, where is my money? Would you believe that that went on to become a gigantic meme in the VeggieTales Abridged fandom? I didn't think anything of it at the time. I thought it was just, oh, hey, yeah, money, cool. And then Bob gets shot, and then so does Lovey. For the voices, I wanted the characters to sound entirely different from their real VeggieTales counterparts. So Bob has that high and floaty voice in the original, so he obviously has a deeper voice in this one. Larry's is silly and joyous, meaning that he gets the other voice, the scratchier, anger sounding one. And for those of you who wonder if I'm going to be doing the voice in this video, No, I am not going to be doing the voice in this video. There is no way you're going to make me do that. You can also tell just how weird this was by my Archibald impression back then. So at the time, I forgot about my VeggieTales impressions that I had when I was younger. I didn't discover them again until, actually, a month after Take 38.5 came out. Me and my friend Kyle were messing around and all of a sudden, I broke out this voice! And then we realized, wow, that sounds like Pod Grape! And then the whole thing just came rushing back to me. So this was before I realized I could do a pretty decent Archibald. Take a listen to the voice in this episode, and then compare it to the one that happens later on down the line. When that cucumber came up to me and asked me what he wanted to do this weekend, I said we should go down to the orphanage and chop up some orphans and turn them into a Caesar salad. We haven't done that in a while. Do you want to hear the story about how I destroyed everyone who ate pineapple in the state of... <laughs> Take 38.5 is most certainly just a pilot. That's it. And it's not very funny. There's no real jokes to it. There's no real twists and turns. It's just kind of lame. But what do you expect? I was a sophomore in high school. I didn't really know what I was doing when it came to editing and I was just learning how to write these things. So yeah, I guess I was just starting off. Even so, it doesn't mean it's good. I'd give this a four out of 10. Yes, I am gonna be ranking these episodes because why not? In order to get a lot of mileage out of the VeggieTales series when it came to VeggieTales Abridged, I decided to break up each individual episode segment and make it its own abridged episode. This included the silly songs. So I was thinking, if VeggieTales Abridged is going to start off as the antithesis of VeggieTales, what it needs is atrocious singing. Even now, I'll still say VeggieTales, more often than not, has some really catchy, really stellar songs. And I recognized that back in the day, so I decided, all right, let's make them horrific. However, I didn't realize that when you sing badly for a joke, you need to make sure it's really bad. Otherwise, it's not going to be very pleasant. And that's all why a water buffalo is, which is the second episode, by the way. Well, actually, no, that's not all it is, because half of this thing is just a still image of the Silly Songs with Larry logo, with two narrators fighting against each other. And guess what? I, I don't know if you could tell. What do you mean it's not time yet? I mean, we're supposed to be making the parody of Tales from the Crisper. They're both voiced by me. I know, right? I don't get this. I don't think it's funny. I don't like it at all. I give this a 2 out of 10. I'm very sorry I made this one, especially the way it turned out. There's no real joke except for now it's everybody hates a water buffalo. Ooh, yeah, so creative, so different, ooh. I'll cut me a little bit more slack though because again, I was starting off at the time. That's why it doesn't have a one or a zero. I'm so generous to myself. And now we come to my least favorite episode in all of VeggieTales Abridged, Spooky Tales. Again, there's the song in there where it's you need to really, really make it bad and don't have it go on for too long. I mean, it was really, really bad. I did definitely do that on purpose. However, it wasn't funny. It didn't stick. Oh well, now I know. Six years later. But as for the rest of the thing, it's just kinda... Meh. You can tell that at the time, I was really just trying to stick too close to the source material, where all I did was follow the story beat for beat, and just twist a couple things to make them weird or dark. An example of this is Phil Winkelstein, a.k.a. Frankencelery. The only thing he does in this is just say, I'm hiding for the cops. Don't tell them I'm here. And, once again, that became a meme in the VeggieTales fanbase. One that got old really quickly, just like the money joke. All I really remember is thinking at the time that 
If I took something innocent like VeggieTales and just twisted it enough to make it not that innocent, it would automatically be funny. But I forgot to add legitimate humor. If I did this now, well, for one thing, I wouldn't have done this now, but let's say for the sake of the argument, I did, I definitely would have made it a lot more fast-paced and have a lot more dialogue-related humor rather than just relying on the original tropes. I think with the original episodes of VeggieTales Abridged, they really suffer because if you don't have any connection to the source material, you're gonna have no idea what's going on. There's no real explanation for what happens or why or anything like that. It's kind of like going in to watch Spaceballs if you have no idea about Star Wars. Actually, no, that's not even a fair comparison because the movie's funny on its own already. But knowing what Star Wars is already helps. VeggieTales Abridged is not that way at all. You're going in completely lost if you don't know about VeggieTales, especially these specific episodes. So Spooky Tales gets a 1 from me. I tried. I tried so hard and just couldn't make it. I was proud of it at the time, though. I thought it was really well made and people really seemed to like it. This is the first episode that I can recall did really well. A lot of people were starting to find this in their recommended and were going, what the heck is this? They were checking it out, enjoying it, and subscribing to my channel. They were checking out my other things too, like my absolutely atrocious reviews, and yeah, that's how I was able to get a pretty decent circle, around that time at least. Around that time, the views were in the high hundreds, which for me, with a channel with about I think it was 400 subscribers at the time. That was really good. So I knew I had to keep making them, and oh no, it's this one. Episode 0, theme song. Everything I said about White Water Buffalo applies to this one. 1 out of 10. Second least favorite. Moving on. So with this newfound audience, I decided that I really needed to up my game. If I was getting a lot more fans that were starting to give me attention, I needed to do whatever I could to keep them coming back. So, in order to keep the good times coming, I wrote episode 4, Daniel and the Mailman Trap. The whole thing was kind of inspired by a Dave the Barbarian slash Jay Ward style, where there was a narrator that constantly intermixed with the characters, fighting over where the story should go, and all that sort of stuff. Honestly, I think this one's okay. The editing is pretty lousy because I didn't really know what I was doing, and the audio is a little weird. See, I was using a microphone setup that I wasn't really familiar with at the time. My dad was letting me use his, this is before I got my own equipment and everything, so I didn't really know what audio settings to use or anything like that, so I was still kind of trying to find what to do. I don't know if anyone can notice, but I most certainly do. Up until this point, VeggieTales Abridged had been edited in Windows Movie Maker, can you tell? But this time, I decided to use Sony Vegas and I didn't really use any of the extra features that it offered. I was pretty new to the software, so I didn't really know what exactly could do. So, in all honesty, I just kinda treated it like Windows Movie Maker. And that's why it looks the way it does now. But I think that if I re-recorded it today, I'd have a pretty decent script on my hands. I mean, I would've tweaked a few things, added a little bit more humor, but as it stands, I think it was executed decently, like I'd say a good 6 out of 10 or so. The whole crux of this thing was, well, for those of you who don't know the story of Daniel in the lion's den, here's how it goes. King Darius has a dream. None of his wise men can interpret the dream. Daniel comes in and interprets the dream. He becomes the prince of the land, the wise men get angry, they throw Daniel in the lion's den, he survives the lion's den, then King Darius gets mad, saves Daniel, praises God, and throws the wise men into the lion's den where they're probably eaten. So in this version, everyone's just overly nice to each other and doesn't really want to get the plot moving. For example, the wise men are actually really happy that Daniel became the right-hand man to the king, and it's only with the narrators prodding, urging them to get the story moving, that they decide to be mad. And then they spend the entire episode just trying to figure out how to destroy Daniel while Daniel does himself in, with his mailman trap, in case you couldn't tell from the title. Once again, this one was really well received, so I decided to move right along to the next episode, and this one was where a lot of things changed. This is the last episode of VeggieTales Abridged that I edited on my own because this is around the time that I realized I hate editing. I don't know what I'm doing, it takes too long, it's slow, it's boring, not for me. That's one of the reasons why I got Billy HL to edit a lot of the Media Mementos videos, among other reasons. So, this one was called Where's the Silly Song, based on the forgive matic segment from God Wants Me to Forgive Them, which is episode 2 of VeggieTales, in case you didn't know, which I'm sure you do if you're watching this, but if not, well, now you know. 
There were a lot of complaints lauded against the forgive o at the time, with parents wondering, Where's the silly song? Where is it? We wanted more silly songs with Larry. The whole thing was that Silly Songs with Larry wasn't supposed to be a reoccurring segment. But everyone thought that it was, so now they got really mad. That was the entire point of this episode. That's all it is. It's nothing else, really. We're going right back to the Spooky Tales stuff where it's slightly twisting the original and just letting it ride. Simple as that. 5 out of 10. Not really doing it that much for me today, but at the time, I thought it was really well made. So did a lot of other people. People thought it was a real good time, and they wanted to see where the show was going. Someone, in fact, liked the show so much that they wanted to get involved. This person wants to remain anonymous, so I'm just going to call him Taragaduma. Taragaduma wanted to get involved by editing VeggieTales Abridged. I jumped at this opportunity. 100%. Didn't even look at what else he edited. I just knew I wanted what he had. And what he had was a way out of editing. Although here's a funny story. Technically speaking, I wasn't supposed to reply to that message because I was at a church camp at the time, way out in the middle of the woods, and we weren't allowed to bring our phones, but guess what? I brought mine anyways. I managed to get some signal, and that was the first thing I saw after two days of not checking anything. So, yeah, it's a church camp miracle! So with Taragaduma editing the next episode, I was free to continue to write all the episodes that I wanted without having to worry about an editing schedule for myself. So I sat down and wrote the next three episodes in one day while I was at that camp. And as soon as I got home, I recorded episode 6, Yummy Grapes, which at the time I thought was the best one yet. Mostly because of the editing, because get this. Unlike me, Taragaduma knew what he was doing. It actually looked good. For once, it wasn't just a bunch of obvious repeating loops. There were all these bells and whistles thrown in that I think really helped tie the whole thing together. The episode itself has a couple good moments. Once again, it just takes the original VeggieTales episode and then spins it to be slightly off. But if I'm being honest, it's not that weird or different until we get to the ending. This is partially because there was a little bit of a mishap. So I'll play the scene here. Take a look. Well, we don't know where to go from this. Uh, no, I don't think that's gonna work. Uh, we're not too good at the math stuff. It's not like you have choice. <laughs> so, everyone really liked that joke at the time because it was random and silly. I still think it's somewhat kind of a little funny, just a tad, but that wasn't supposed to be the actual scene. Here's what was supposed to happen. In the original script, there was the line from the original, how about you become the grapes of math, or something like that. And then Paul Grape says that infamous line, the, oh, well, we're not really good at the math stuff. And then the rest of the episode played out the same. But I don't know if the script itself was, like, accidentally missing the line, or the audio file didn't get put in, or something. But we ended up with this, and people thought it was funny. And it makes it even stranger, because Taragaduma actually did voice Dad Asparagus here. So... If anyone would have had the audio file, it would have been him, so I think the error was on my end. Until we get a firm answer, which I don't think we ever will, and to be honest, I don't really care to have one, I'm gonna accept full responsibility of this. So yes, you can send all your hate mail towards me that that one line didn't get put in. And also, this is the episode with the 50-foot washing machine. I don't know, I just thought I'd point that out, because a lot of people really like that. I'd give this a 5 out of 10. It was alright, passable. It was fine sitting through once, I just don't think I'll ever watch it again. Sorry, Taragaduma, I know you worked hard. And there's probably something else I should mention, too. Around this time is when I made this thing called the Ikebezer song, and it's not very good. The whole thing is just a bunny song parody where I'm making fun of the Ikebezer character that replaced Mr. Nezer in VeggieTales in the House. Let's not even give this one the time of day. Move on. Now we have the first VeggieTales Abridged episode that I think was pretty good. This one is called The Toy That Ruined the Winter Solstice Festival. I was all set and ready to go to make this the biggest, best episode of VeggieTales Abridged yet. It was going to be about the toy that saved Christmas because, well, it was around that time. Except, I decided to make it about a little bit more of an obscure winter holiday. Thanks to that Nickmas clip that mixed Charlie Brown Christmas with Rugrats, I decided to use the Winter Solstice Festival as the holiday of choice. 
And I actually had a casting call for this for the very first time. I wanted actors who were not me to play some of the characters. Of course, we already had one of those with Taraga Duma playing Dad Asparagus, but this time, I wanted some bigger, sorta of more permanent members to the cast. Of course, Buzzsaw Louie would never appear again, but George would, and guess who auditioned for George? So around the time of the Winter Solstice Festival, uh, shut up, <clears throat> I was delivering a package. Unfortunately, that was after I had robbed the bank, poisoned the water supply, and burnt down the local market. Yes, that is a young Billy H.L. This is how I met him, actually. I got a video from him saying that he wanted to get involved, and I recommended that he audition for the open role of George because, well, he appears in the next episode. Obviously, we kind of need an actor for him. So I got this video and hired him on the spot. So, yeah. If it wasn't for VeggieTales Abridged, I wouldn't have met one of my closest friends. The guy's amazing, so I'd say VeggieTales Abridged was worth it purely for this. Five dollars. Now, how he felt about the George character later on, we'll get into that, trust me. But at the time, George didn't really have much of a defined character. As the series would go on, he was basically the whiny, self-hating, and most likely bipolar, by the way, that is a trademark of Drawn Together, please don't sue me, guy who just wants to be friends. Sadly, though, for whatever reason, people hate him. Maybe it's because he tells weird stories that don't go anywhere. Maybe it's because he's unbelievably needy. Maybe it's because he smells like mothballs. I don't know. For whatever reason, nobody can stand to be around this guy. However, in episode 7, George didn't really have that personality trait yet. He was just... some weirdo. Which is usually what happens when a character gets introduced in VeggieTales Abridged. They start off as just some screwball weirdo, and then they develop a personality later. You can see that with Dad Asparagus, but we'll get to that later. I mostly wanted to touch on George right now because not only will he play majorly into the later part of the show, but also because the guy who voiced him is also editing this video. So, hi Billy, doesn't this make you cringe going back to this? It doesn't for me though, because I thought this video was pretty well made. The plot of this was that Mr. Nezer wants to destroy the Winter Solstice Festival, even though they're in Iceland and they don't celebrate that there. And Buzzsaw Louie wants to save it. So he ropes Bob, Jr., and Larry into his little plan to save the holiday. However, nobody else in town even knows what the festival is. So the whole thing is really just a futile effort. I don't think it's perfect, but I think it's the first episode that I could actually stand to go back and watch. I thought there were some decent jokes in there, and I thought that my voice acting was getting a whole lot better. So, I'd give this a 7 out of 10. Well done, the toy that ruined the Winter Solstice Festival, well done. You are actually okay, but you're still not going back up online. Sorry about that. The next episode, episode 8, Larry in Forgive Me Not, was the most popular episode of VeggieTales Abridged views-wise, and I don't know why. I didn't then, don't now. This episode sucks. It's another episode where it just kind of takes the original, slightly twists it, and that's about all. There's no real interesting moments except for the roll call when everybody's trying to get onto the boat. Then there was Chester A. Arthur, there was Cool Cat, there was Gruggle Stan. No, there wasn't. Let me dream, Bob! Oh, uh, okay. This was one of the first notable times of VeggieTales Abridged going out of its way to mention characters that were not in the show. That was extremely popular, so I decided to do that a whole lot more often. A lot of people in the comments both thought it was random and funny, and also they like to imagine those characters being in VeggieTales and all the crazy things that would happen. So I decided, in the subsequent episodes, to give them more fuel. It ended up getting overused, but still, that's where it all came from. And that is the one part I find mildly amusing. The song, again, sucks because I didn't go bad enough with it, but still wasn't very good. The jokes aren't really jokes, nothing much really happens. And for the life of me, once again, I don't know how this one got so popular. It's not the best at all, even at the time I didn't really care for this one. When I sent the audio off to the editor and the actors, I was thinking to myself, no way, there's no way we can keep doing this. I gotta redo the episode or something because, oh wait, nope, too late. My actors and editor already have their stuff. Great. Oh, so good. And it was this episode that made me realize that I can't keep making VeggieTales a bridge this way. I needed to make it bigger. I needed to make it sillier. It couldn't just be mildly twisting the original anymore. 
The show was getting really popular now. I was starting to get into the thousands of views. And at this point, there most certainly was a dedicated VeggieTales Abridged fandom. A lot of them seemed to be older kids or even adults who grew up with VeggieTales and are now going back to relive it. However, around this time, there were also some younger kids that were getting introduced thinking that I was making VeggieTales Abridged as a slap in the face to the original and they got really mad. Because all the videos are private now, none of these comments really survive. But take my word for it though, they were there and they were hilarious. There was one of them saying something like, VeggieTales is better than this show ever will be and you're just jealous of them or something like that. And I'm like, chill dude, it's a parody. Be cool. From what I can tell, there was a little bit of time in VeggieTales fandom history where any little parody of VeggieTales or anything like that was automatically seen as plagiarism. Like the Religitables or Fruity Tales or even Kid Fusion, they were all seen as ripoffs, and the comments were not shy about letting them know that. I think VeggieTales Abridged might have helped put them in their place because I proved pretty quickly that that was not the case. Most of the time I would tell them, hey, look at my other videos and see if you still think the same. And when they'd see me sing the praises of some of the best episodes of the show, they'd change their minds really quickly. And then they became fans of the show, so in a weird way, they actually ended up supporting the series and making it even better and more popular. So yeah, I guess it was all worth it in the end, but it wouldn't be for much longer, but that's for a little bit down the road. Anyways, I needed a new method to make VeggieTales a bridge, like I said. The old style just wouldn't cut it anymore. And speaking of cutting, we get to episode 9, Where Is My Razor? For those of you who don't know, the original hairbrush song was going to be about Larry's razor, but then they changed it for, well, take a wild freaking guess. This one was entirely improvised, and once again, it has the song thing where it's like, it needs to be worse. But I did take a little bit more... I don't, I don't think risks is the right word, but I did experiment a little bit more with the ludicrousness and the violent nature of Larry and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, four out of 10, but I can definitely see where I'm coming from here. This is where the VeggieTales Abridge that most of you guys who know what it is are familiar with started to come into being. I realized that this was the way to go. I needed to push boundaries way further than just sticking too close to the original. And that's where episode 10 came around. But before I get to episode 10, I need to introduce the main antagonists of this story, the Rabbids. No, no, not the Rabbids from Rayman Raving Rabbids, no, no, no. But I guess for a visual representation, we could use those. I mean, let's face it, they're loud, annoying, and they scream a lot, so yeah, they're pretty much the same. The Rabbids became the diehard fans, the ones where if you dissed the show in any way, they would get really upset and they'd flame you like crazy. Kind of like how the Adventure Time and regular show fan base used to be back in the day. Remember? When Ben the Looney said anything about them, they'd just attack him. Although, looking back, those videos maybe, just maybe weren't the best. But this video isn't about him, so let's move quickly onwards. The Rabbids weren't really fun for anybody because if someone had any constructive criticism that I needed in order to better the show, they'd get mad and snap at people. But, They'd also snap at me for not making an episode every 10 minutes. Yes, the Rabbids were the ones who posted the Where Are the VeggieTales Abridged comments. You know those. For those of you who were there at the time, you remember seeing those, don't you? I do. I most certainly do. And they were great. Yeah, in case you can't tell by my voice, I was really, really not happy with these guys. This is what it was like every single time I came across a rabbit. Hey, I really like your show, VeggieTales Abridged. It is so funny. I love it to pieces. Ah, oh, thank you. I worked really hard on it, so... Hey, can you make more episodes? Yeah, well, we have one in the works. It's gonna be a great one. It's all about... No, it needs to come out now. But we only just wrote it yesterday. Uh, the audio hasn't even been recorded. Well, make it happen. I can't afford the wait. Oh, the wait is killing me. When's the thing gonna come out, by the way? I don't know. Just be patient. I can't be patient. I'm allergic to that. Every single time I try to be patient, I get all these itchy green spots oh it's so bad yeah you're telling me hey why don't you just stop that you know calm down 
take things easy. But the next episode needs to come out now! That's not how these things work. That's not how any of these things work. Now, come on, let's go watch some nails. I'll be back tomorrow. And if it's not done by then, I'm going to leave you death threats. Yeah, that's mature. All right, guys, you heard them. They want this episode to come out tomorrow, so let's take a little extra long. Are you sure? That sounds like provoking them. Yeah, the last thing we want is more of these guys around. I am sure they're going to learn their lesson. <laughs> There weren't a ton of them around this time, but they were starting to pop up more and more. So that's why I had this at the end of episode 10. Don't even ask! These things take a while to put out! Yes, I had to put that in to tell the rabbits stop asking, it's okay, we're working on these episodes, but they take a bit of time to make. Did they realize what I was saying or even listen in any way, shape, or form? Not really, no. They calmed down for about two weeks, but then they got right back to it. Episode 10, Help Wanted, was based on Flibber Lou, and it was really, really hard to get this thing out. For whatever reason, Big Idea did not want this episode on YouTube in any way, because they struck it down again, and again, and again, and again, and again. I had to post it on Dailymotion for the longest time before we put it back to YouTube, mirrored, and it still had a copyright complaint. That's why this episode is mirrored. The episode itself? It's okay, I guess, like a 5 out of 10 or so. Not much really to talk about except it's Flibberal Lou, but a lot crazier. Simple as that. It's also one of the last appearances of Lovey Asparagus, who was played by Whoop Doo, who was a longtime fan of the show. If you're watching this, hey Whoop Doo, how you doing? This is also notable for being the last episode that was edited by Taraga Duma. If you don't know why that is, well, it's a funny story, but we're going to be getting into that when episode 11 comes around. But right now we're focusing on episode 10. Episode 10 was made under some pretty strange circumstances, given the fact that I rewrote this episode like three times because I just had to make it good. I didn't want another Larry in Forget Me Not. I wanted it to actually be something I'd sit down and watch. I can tell now that I was still trying to find my footing. I believe that in episode 11 is where I really found what I wanted the show to be. So this was kind of a testing phase, and I think that in this one, the me at the time thought that this was going to be what works. This is how the show should be. It should be more of this, but if possible, even sillier. And with that extra dose of silliness, VeggieTales Abridged became... VeggieTales abridged. No more style changes, no more shifting, no more any of that. It had a set voice and style, and I wasn't about to change that. But that wasn't the only thing that was going on during episode 10's production, because we found out that people were stealing the episodes and uploading them to Vimeo and Dailymotion. Without our permission, without our credit, claiming it was theirs sometimes, which was great. I was so happy about that. See, whenever people stole my videos originally, which I hate to say it, but it happened a lot, I'd always copyright claim them immediately. Whenever I found it, gone. Next day. No question. Nothing like that. Wouldn't let that happen because, hey, I and my editors worked hard on those things, so those are going down. So they uploaded them to Dailymotion, so that way I couldn't claim it because Dailymotion doesn't really let you claim a video that's on YouTube. So they found a loophole, but I decided to get at them with, in the next episode, having a little bit of a snide comment against them. This one. And say with all those people who illegally upload our videos to Dailymotion. And no, they didn't really stop until we got to, I think, episode 19. I think that's when they stopped and they all disappeared. So yeah, that's how long it took. Made me feel great. Once again, I chalked those up to either kids that didn't know any better, or rabbits. For the sake of simplicity, I'll say that they were rabbits. And here's a little bit of a status check at the time of the episode's upload. The episodes were getting about the mid-1000s, maybe even upper 1000s sometimes. People were starting to really get attached to this, which also means more and more rabbits. Around this point, the comments section was divided 33, 33, 33. And yes, that makes 99%, but 3 doesn't go into 100, so... Yeah. One group was... The aforementioned older kids or adults that grew up with VeggieTales and are enjoying the show. Those ones were always my favorites because, well, I could kind of talk on their level. They were about my age, so we were able to have a cohesive conversation. There were also young kids who were still into the show who... Sometimes didn't quite get it, but I still enjoyed their feedback. It was nice seeing what the younger audience had to say, even though VeggieTales Abridged was most certainly not made for them. VeggieTales Abridged was always aimed to be like a 12-plus show. 
So there were a lot of eight-year-olds watching, but oh well. If I was monetized, I would have gotten their money, so it was okay. And then the other third were rabbits. When's the next episode coming out? Make Larry even sillier. How dare you not make the next episode come out the day after? Yeah, I actually got that one once. Once again, great times. Those ones I always ignored, and hey, sometimes people would comment to put them in their place, and then mysteriously, their comments would get deleted shortly after. I guess they couldn't take the heat, so they got out of the kitchen. Oh well, I didn't mind. I had the 11th episode to write, Gourds in Space. This one was gonna be, once again, the biggest, best episode yet, blah 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 blah. I was all set for this one to come out, and I had everything get put together. I had a new actor for Scooter, who made his very first appearance in this episode. Dad Asparagus now had a personality, having him basically be the silly version of Clay Puppington from Moral Oral. Once again, I hadn't watched the show at the time. But now that I have, I can make that comparison! And it had lots and lots and lots of Larry. For this one, I really wanted to push Larry out into the foreground because he was obviously the most popular character. Bob was the straight man of the group. He never really had a lot of jokes of his own. People liked Junior because he sounded like Eric Cartman. But once again, kind of like Bob, he sort of played this straight man role. So with a lot of straight men going around, not in that way, I'm just saying as like a comedy thing. Yeah, forget it. I don't have to appease Twitter, I'm not even really on there that much. We needed the comic relief, and that was Larry. He was all over this episode. I actually had an ex-girlfriend that really liked this episode, so much so that she'd always quote it to me whenever we'd go like on a walk or something. It was kind of weird, but hey, I thought it was fun, at the time at least. This episode was also getting hyped like mad. I was telling people, here it comes, here it comes guys, you ready? Get set! Here it goes! It's the VeggieTales of Bridge, the Gourds Must Be Crazy episode, and it's coming, it's coming! But it never did. It just took a really long time to get made, which, you know, okay, that happens. We still needed to find a voice actor for Jerry anyways, because I decided I didn't really want to play him after all. So we had a little bit of a casting call. And there were a lot, a lot, a lot of kids that wanted to play Jerry. I don't have this comment saved, I really, really wish I did, and I know the wording slightly changes every time, but this is basically what they were saying. So I imagine that they wanted to sound like really professional so I'd be impressed or anything, which, side note, if you want to reach out to me or Billy or anything, just go on over to our Discord and talk. We're not big celebrities or anything, and we're always excited to meet new people, so... Yeah, don't be afraid. But I don't really think that this person knew how to sound professional because this is basically what they wrote. For the next upcoming episode of VeggieTales Abridged, I do indeed wish to play Jerry. And that was about it. So a lot of the kids in the comments would say that they wanted to play a certain character, but they didn't send an audition video at all. They didn't really give a demo or anything at all. They just said, I got dibs, I got dibs, and that's not really how that worked. There was a guy who ended up getting the role. I don't remember his name, so I can't really contact him, so I'm just gonna call him Leon Kuwata. Leon Kuwata got the role of Jerry, and then I never heard from him again. He never sent in his dialogue, so in the end, we decided to just go with the dialogue I wrote in the practice script. How the episodes worked is that I wrote the script out on my laptop, and then I recorded my audio with everyone else's, kind of so I could direct them while not actually being with them at the time, and then sent them that audio, and then they'd record their lines from that. So I used my Jerry voice in the practice audio, and we ended up using that. So once again, I said, all right, we're going to be using that audio, so I guess the search is over and the episode production can resume. But I don't know if it really did, because once again, the episode just didn't come out. We were waiting and waiting and waiting some more, and Taragaduma didn't say a word. And so I couldn't really let the show get stagnant, so I decided to make episode 12 instead. I wrote it out, and I voiced it all, and lo and behold, as I'm writing it out, literally as I'm writing it out, I get a message from this guy, again, I, I don't know if you're really familiar with him, his name is Billy HL, and he asked, hey, is George going to be coming up in another episode because I'd really like to get involved, and I told him, hey, you caught me at literally just the right time, man, I'm writing out episode 12, I'll get back to you soon, don't worry, George is back and he's got a lot more to do this time. So I didn't really know Billy that much at the time, but I could tell he was a pretty cool guy that I'd get along with, so I wanted him to have a little bit more of a presence in the show. And that's partially why I came up with the George character that was seen throughout the rest of the show. 
I wanted to give Billy a lot more work to do and a lot more responsibility with his acting. So, here it was. George, now a fully fleshed out character ready to take the world by storm. But the only thing was, episode 11 still wasn't out. By this time, everybody was getting antsy. All of those 33% of the audience, every single one of those, all those factions wanted that episode out now. And so did I. But I didn't want to be forceful or put pressure on Taragaduma, so just kind of waited. But then, a knight in shining armor came running in. His name was Leaf Razor, which yes, he is a patron on Media Mementos. Go give him some love if you can. He volunteered to be another editor for the show, and I explained the situation going on, saying, hey, you're going to be able to do episode 12, right? Because episode 11 is currently gone. It's missing. Something's happening to it. It fell into the ether somehow. He was cool with that decision, and he made it decently quickly. That's where we got Willy Wonka and the Three Clever Boys. 7 out of 10. I still think this one holds up decently well. This is the first episode, at least in airing order, that 100% resembled what I wanted the show to be all the way back in Take 38.5. This is what I wanted the show to be. This is where I wanted it to go. And I was so happy with it. So happy, in fact, that I just posted episode 12 with a description in the comments saying, hey guys, episode 11 is still being worked on, so this is going to be released a little bit early. Even so, we still got a lot of people saying, where's episode 11? Sometimes even replying to that same comment. And this episode got tons of praise. People fell in love with this one. So many jokes people kept quoting, like the I'm also Iron Man joke, the pickle song, the stickle word, George's story about the Skeksis and Fat Albert trying to stop Sporticus, all those things. People were loving it. So I was on fire to make the next episode of VeggieTales Abridged. I now had an even bigger fandom to please. It seems like every time I put out a new episode, there'd be about a hundred new folks who were coming to watch. And boy, did that make me happy. For the first time ever, I really felt like I had a big responsibility as a content creator. I had other shows going on that were decently popular, like those old reviews I was making, although at this point they were pretty much defunct and I had TV talks instead, which those may not have been the best, but they were most certainly a lot better than what we had before. And of course VeggieTales Live and Reloaded, which was basically the exact opposite of VeggieTales Abridged. Where VeggieTales Abridged was taking the old episodes and were making jokes out of them, Live and Reloaded took the spirit of the original show and made our very own episodes out of them. Both shows were popular, but they were nothing compared to VeggieTales Abridged. Even so, they all seemed to live in harmony. They all had either their own distinct fandoms or, hey, sometimes people would be fans of all three shows. They all got equal support despite their varying view counts. And that made me very determined to keep going with all three. I was having one of the best times on YouTube that I had ever had. And probably the best, actually, up until that point. So with the success of episode 12, I decided to release episode 11, except, well, still not done. Alright, well, I'm sure it'll be done soon. So we're gonna release episode 13 instead. A cucumber holiday thingy. Only named that because I didn't title the episode. Yeah, even on the original script, which, by the way, is now long since gone, I forgot to put in a title because the title's usually the last thing I come up with. This one was based on the Oh Santa song, and we had an actor for the peach in this that was later redubbed with someone else. So that's a little bit of an interesting something, so moving on, the episode is... It's okay. Like a 6 out of 10, I'd say. There's, of course, the infamous I will eradicate you with my stomach joke, which, eh, you know, is okay. It's fine. Some of the pretenses here are alright. It's an interesting twist on the original, but there's nothing really to say about it. In all honesty, it's one of them that I forget about the most. Although, people did really like this one, of course. It got glowing reviews, and the Larry's Lesson segment at the end was especially well-received. Oh yeah, I guess I didn't really mention that. Mostly because it was introduced in episode 11, which hadn't been released. So I decided that starting with episode 11, at the end of every episode, Larry would always come out to tell people the moral of the story that they just watched, kind of as a parody of those Ghostbuster or He-Man cartoons from back in the 80s that always had to shoehorn the educational message in. In fact, for the longest time, this was all people ever saw of episode 11, because I released the Larry's Lesson segment as a little bit of a teaser. 
That and also to tell people, hey, it exists. It's coming. Don't worry, guys. Hang in there. And yeah, that's all I really had, so that's all I could release, but people loved it. So it became a mainstay staple after episode 11. Since the episodes that had them got really high reviews, I decided to make them even crazier as time went on, and boy did they ever. But around this time, I started getting kind of busy. I got involved in a theater group that I became really attached to. So uh, this doesn't really have anything to do with the video, but I'm a big acting guy. I love acting in plays or shows or anything like that. And the department at my high school was atrocious. I could make a whole bunch of story videos about that, but that's not really what you're here to see. So getting involved with this theater group really helped take the edge off of those miserable experiences at school. And because of that, that became my priority. I started letting VeggieTales Bridge slip a little bit. In other words, I wasn't really writing as much as I quote unquote should be. And the rabbits didn't let me hear the end of it. Starting at this point, the rabbits became a big problem. Now they were taking up about 45% of the comments. Fun. Every three days, it would be, when's the next episode of VeggieTales Abridged? Where is the episode? Why aren't you working on it? Little did they know I actually was working on it, just very, very slowly. But I did end up making the script for episode 14 on Avenue Q, which was about Dave and the Giant Pickle. This episode was actually originally outlined back in the days of Daniel and the Mailman Trap. Not kidding. Although the episode was very different from the one that ended up getting released. So it was actually going to be about David being this evil little guy and they send Goliath out to go destroy him. But then David ends up eating Goliath or something. Something dumb like that. And yeah, I ended up rewriting it into On Avenue Q. And it's a 5 out of 10. It's just a typical VeggieTales Abridged episode. There's nothing really to say about it. Except that it also had the debut of Larry Boy, who I made sound like Trekkie Monster from Avenue Q, because in case you couldn't tell by both the title and also the appearance of Larry Boy as Trekkie Monster, that was the play it was in at the time. School edition to be specific, though. Our community theater wouldn't go for the uncut version. For whatever reason, people thought that it was a parody of Arnold Schwarzenegger, and I guess I can kind of see it. But no, that wasn't my intention at all. But then I heard from Taraga Duma, who was officially resigning from the show because they were just too busy. They couldn't finish the episode. I wasn't mad. I wasn't disappointed. I actually fully understood because I was really busy myself. So we sent all the files of the things that had up until that point been kind of completed over to our new editor, Lee Fraser. And then wouldn't you know it? Episode 11 came out. But I changed the name to The Lost Episode because it became a real running joke at the time. That episode 11 just wasn't going to happen. But it did happen. And people loved it. And now I can talk about it. Except not really, because everything I said about Willy Wonka and the Three Clever Boys can be said about this one. Literally everything. Just copy and paste that entire review into this one. Including the score. See? Here it is. Right there. You can see it on your screen. With your seeing orbs. Much like the original VeggieTales, Larry Boy became so popular that I had to give him his very own episode. And I do mean I had to, because the very next episode was Larry Boy and the Fib from Outer Space. This one was the hardest episode to record. So here's the thing. When I was doing Larry's voice, it sounds like it was straining, right? I'm Jerry, not Larry. Even though I don't look like the real Jerry, and even though I look just like Larry and sound just like Larry, I'm not Larry. But no. Actually, even to this day, although I almost never use the voice anymore, I could go on for hours. It doesn't hurt my voice at all. However, Larry Boy's voice, on the other hand, that did. That hurt like crazy. It actually took me a little bit to record this, and by a little bit, I mean two days. The most it's ever taken for me to record an episode of VeggieTales Abridged. The voice just wasn't happening a lot of the time. It was painful. But hey, at least Turagaduma was still around to be the voice of Dad Asparagus, so that was cool, right? I'd give the episode about a 5 out of 10. The only thing that stands out about this is the fact that it revolves around Viking-scented deodorant. It was at this point when I decided, screw it, I'm not really gonna stick with the original stories at all. I'm just gonna have to make my own stories and go with whatever animation that's been provided to make it. And that's where all the random silly plots came in. Starting with this one, I'd say, and yeah, it kind of shows. Do you want to know where the whole Viking-scented deodorant thing came from? No? Well, guess what? You're going to find out anyways, because I'm going to tell you. 
So my friend Kyle, you know, the one that I mentioned earlier in the video, we were at this fair and there was this ride that used to be Aladdin themed. It, it wasn't anymore because I guess they got in trouble with Disney or something because now they had all these weird bootleg versions of the characters that were ridiculous looking. I don't have any pictures of it, so I guess we're just going to have to go with artist interpretation on this one. But the character that was supposed to be Jafar, who, by the way, was now fat and hunchbacked, was holding the genie's lamp where this white mist came out of it, and Kyle and I joked that it was deodorant. And we debated it back and forth on what the funniest scent would be, and we settled on Viking. So I ended up using that for Smells Like Viking. So that's where that all comes from. And I bet your life has been made even better knowing where that came from, right? Sorry, no refunds. There is one thing I can say about Smells Like Viking, though. That it was the very first appearance of the series' main antagonist, the mysterious puppet master who was erroneously attributed to being me in the video, which was not the case. I probably should have specified that, but oh well. This is where we start getting hints of the story. In other words, where things start getting dark. This episode doesn't show it being dark, of course, not in any way, shape, or form. It's all ridiculous and the darkest thing in here is the humor where people just keep dying for a little to no reason. But Smells Like Viking became the episode where we really started setting everything up, even though people didn't really realize it at the time, which would make everything even better when the big twists came in, ooh hoo 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 but the rabbits were still growing. At this point they were now 50%. They were making it a lot harder though, and I kinda know why they were growing too. I think some of the people from some of the other factions were getting really annoyed with how long it was taking to make these episodes. It was taking about four months at a time. I mean, can you really blame them? These episodes were kind of complex. And abridged episodes don't usually come out super quickly. They're not very easy to produce. To put it in perspective, Smells Like Viking was the last episode I recorded before I went off to college. And it came out around early December of that year. So people had to wait, and even though we constantly told them, hey, these things take a long time to produce, just like we said in episode 10, they didn't care. They were starting to get a lot more obsessed and a lot pickier about what was happening. At this point, they started saying things like, if the next episode isn't the best episode, I'm gonna be so mad. It shouldn't take this long. I think the Odd Ones Out actually made a video about this pretty recently. It's this one right here. Yeah, this is dating the video quite a bit. I don't know if he's gonna upload another one since, but still, the point stands. These things take time, and a lot of people don't really understand that. Or at least they didn't at the time. They did later for reasons that you'll find out soon. I know it keeps saying that in this video, but hey, that keeps you watching, doesn't it? <laughs> the rabbits were starting to annoy the real fans too, because they also had to chime in saying, be careful, don't get them angry, these things take a long time. And for whatever reason, it never really seemed to register with them, but hey. That's in the past. Can't really change the past, can you? And then eventually, episode 16 A Tale of Two Tales came out, where the puppet master was prominently featured. This one I'd give another 7 out of 10. A lot of people compared this to Monty Python style of humor, and I can kinda see it, although Monty Python was most certainly smarter than this. The Ningish Myth in this episode was a mythical creature that I and a high school friend of mine made up when we were just absolutely loopy. Like, you know those times where you're so tired that everything is funny to you? Well, that's how the Ningish Murmama myth was created. And I thought, hey, why let it go to waste? Let's put it in here in a show that's already so ridiculous and stupid, it's gonna fit right in. And boy, did it ever. People loved that. And they loved the rest of this episode, too. Many people thought that it was worth the wait. Some people, of course, immediately wanted the next episode to come out, which wasn't gonna happen. Nobody really paid those people that much mind, though, because in all respects, this episode was a giant success. And I was really happy at the time because nobody was catching on to the whole Puppet Master thing. And then, it happened. We lost another editor. Lee Fraser ended up bowing out of the project, which it was sad to see him go, but... Oh well, you know, it's his decision. Totally understand. And around that time, someone else popped into the mix, WTLN as I'll call him, because it's a lot shorter than saying his real name. He volunteered to be an assistant editor. I sent him a demo to test his skills, and the very next day, he came back with some stuff of amazing quality that he made in just one day. I was blown away. I was so excited. This guy was put on board immediately. 
because I knew he could turn these things around very quickly. And that's when episode 17 came out, except not really. People never saw the original episode 17 as it was supposed to be produced. So there was this one teaser I posted. And yes, this is where the infamous screaming joke comes in. I have a very important message for all of you. And that message is as follows. Yeah, I'm so proud of that one. Anyways, this one was supposed to just be kind of a dumb variety show thing, and the audio was so bad that it never ended up getting produced. I'm so thankful for that. I don't even know if I still have it, to be honest. And no, I will never release it even if I do have it. So I decided to rework episode 17 into a TV episode. Kind of like Gravity Falls Public Access, where the characters would just turn on Public Access TV and a horrible TV show would play. I thought this could be a good substitute for the silly songs. So I decided to make the episode and see what everyone thought. If there was a positive reception, it would stick around. This episode became VeggieTales Abridged TV of Doom. And well, yeah, everyone loved it. Everyone wanted to see more of it because it was the most random thing ever. To this day, I think that it was a good creative experiment. I don't know if I necessarily liked it, I kind of have differing opinions depending on the day, although there are very few days when I think about this episode or really any of the episode of the show, so I'll just give it a mm out of 10 because I don't really know how to think about this one. My opinions changed so much on it, but people wanted to see more of it and they were so happy with this. And since I couldn't make any money off of the show because of bogus copyright claims, fan appreciation and approval was really all I could go for. I was very happy that they were liking this, this was basically our payment, like I just said, so why not make more? I put another one on the scheduling board, but that one wouldn't be the next episode, nor will it be the next one we talk about, because before we get to episode 18, we gotta talk about episode 14.5, the band episode. This one was never fully produced. It was supposed to be a giant collaboration of all the characters up until this point, talking about the various different presidents, going over their history and their policies, but in a VeggieTales abridged way. In other words, everything was ridiculous and wrong. Think a giant, bloated, half hour long Larry's Lesson segment. It wasn't funny, it went on way too long, and it wasn't produced because not only would it be too difficult for the editors, but also it was way too political. Even though none of the things in here made any sense or were even remotely true, we all agreed that it would be best to have this episode just kinda drift away, never to be seen again until I decided to post it to the channel in its unfinished state, showing people, hey, here's some cool stuff that went on behind the scenes. There you go. It's not funny. No one watches it. Cool. We can pretend it never happened. Because yeah, people watched it and they got mad that it wasn't a real episode. Luckily, TV of Doom came shortly after, so the rabbits were appeased. Yes, the rabbits were actually getting angry that I posted a bonus filler episode that was never actually produced. They were mad because there were no visuals, even though there was a prelude explaining why and what this was. Can't please everybody, I know that. But at this point, they became a big problem because now they were a majority of the audience. All the VTA casual fans out there were starting to see that the rabbits were getting way, way worse, and they were taking over the show like mad. This is also around the time when I realized that the rabbits were not on my side. They just wanted me for the show, and that's about it. And yeah, all the shows around me started to suffer because of it. The Live and Reloaded episodes, although there were increasingly fewer around this time, were starting to suffer. My TV talks were getting crushed, and Gord Games? Phew, yeah, right. VeggieTales Abridged was starting to become the only thing people cared about. It didn't bother me too much at the time, more just annoyed me. But spoiler alert, it'd get much, 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 much worse from there. It was a little discouraging, yeah, but if people still liked it, why not keep going? So Got the Chompies was released. This one was recorded all the way back in summer of 2018 and wasn't released until quite a bit later. November to be specific. This one, I give a 4 out of 10. This is where the episode started getting weaker for me. There was some good stuff at the end with the Puppet Master coming in and changing the course of the show by wiping Bob and Larry's memories. This is where we started figuring out that he was the big bad controlling the entire show. 
Bob and Larry were in some kind of crazy sick game and they had no idea what was going on because every time they got close to the truth, the puppet master would do something or throw a wrench into the game to change everything. And this is where it all started. Got the chompies aside from that is just dumb. It's just dumb, loudness, annoying running jokes that go on way too long. It's just a waste of time. I really wish I went over this one again because wow. This deserves a 3 out of 10. It's only saved by that cliffhanger at the end. That's it. That's all that really has any merit to it. But of course, people didn't really understand or care about that. They just thought, her, 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 Madam Blueberry has a funny voice. I can't wait to eat you. No, sir. I can't wait to eat you because you're all going to taste delicious. Mm, mm, yeah, mm. yeah, that wouldn't get annoying, would it? It did. Now we get to talk about episode 19, and now for something completely different, or as I call it, the shot that started the VTA Civil War. This is officially where the show stopped becoming fun, because, well, you'll find out soon. So this episode started off actually with a sort of serious tone. Larry, and also Archibald, are struggling with remembering anything about themselves, or where they are, or what they're doing. What world are they in? All the adventures that they had experienced previously have been completely forgotten. And Jimmy, who is working at an ice cream parlor, understands that something is going wrong. So he sends some people out to go recover Bob and Larry's memories, and they happen to be the cast of three, two, one penguins! With all new actors except for Fidgel. That was me doing my Dr. Frog impersonation. One of note is the guy who played Kevin major stump extra he did reaction videos on vta that were allowed to stay up because get this he actually asked for permission so yeah he got to do it and that was cool i liked him he's a cool guy as a way to thank him i put him in the episode and he had a great time saying hello a whole bunch and then that one line at the very end i see it as a way to set myself apart in this world of conformity and originality is it truly such a crime to strive to be separated from one's peers by adding verbal flair or rhythmic drawl to one's speech? So the whole thing was just a 3-2-1 penguins abridged, basically. And guess what the comments were? There were one of two things. Either, does this mean that there's going to be a 3-2-1 penguins abridged? Or, oh, why, why are Bob and Larry in this episode? This is VeggieTales abridged. They, they need it to, uh, to, uh, to be here in uh, a VeggieTales abridged show. Uh, hmm. <sighs> yeah, people got mad at this episode because Bob and Larry weren't in it all that much. Oh no! They also didn't like the serious tone at the beginning either, and really anything about it. They didn't like this episode much at all. I mean, it still had a good like-to-dislike ratio, but still a lot of complaints were lobbied. Which was kind of weird. Even a lot of the more casual fans were confused along with me. The episode seemed to do everything right, at least by VeggieTales Abridged standards, so what went wrong? Did it really all have to be silly and wacky for it to be good? Answer, yes. Which is why we made the next TV episode come right after. Couch Potatoes and Other Such Vegetables, a 26, yes, 26 minute episode, which was basically just the first TV episode, but blown up like crazy. Again, I give this an uh out of 10. This one was a lot more fun to record, mostly because I was thinking, okay, yeah, we're gonna have a little break from the serious stuff, and maybe by the time we come back, everything will be okay and the rabbits will be appeased. But in the back of my head, I knew, no, 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 that was not going to happen. Not at all. And guess what? It wouldn't. But this one got a really strong reception. People liked it. And I can't really talk too much about it because it's more of the same. There's not much to go over. Also worth noting is that around this time, I got on Discord for the very first time because of a longtime fan of mine who also later became a friend, MBC Mechachu. He and his friend Lexi Graham were running this show called DDDZ, and I ended up letting them appear in the show a little bit as their characters. They were very happy to do so, and I was very happy to let them in, and they got a pretty decent reception. For the most part. Because with the inclusion of DDDZ, there became a large whirlwind of opinions. Some people liked their inclusion and wanted to see more of it. Some people didn't like it and wanted it to stop. Some people wanted their own shows to become a part of VeggieTales Abridged, and some even pitched us their OCs, which we kinda couldn't use because they weren't in the VeggieTales episode, so it would have been a little hard to use them. And also, one person suggested we use MLPG4 characters. I presume that means friendship is magic. Please, bronies out there, correct me if I'm wrong. 
The Rabbids were also starting to send in some weird auditions too, like one of them even said, I need to get this role, okay? You don't understand, this is my destiny. I'm not kidding. And no, I know I wasn't a troll either. I looked on their channel and trust me, there was a lot of, uh, let's just say, uh, dramatic content on there. And then there was also someone who auditioned as a completely unrelated anime character that I have no idea who they were. And they got all sad and mopey when they didn't get the role. Speaking of auditions, I actually have some receipts from when a rabbit tried to audition for the show, and it didn't exactly go so well. All of this is real. None of the screenshots are edited in any way, except for the names being blurred. And of course, when I'm reading them, I'm using different names as to protect the identities of everyone involved. Alright, here we go. I did Mabel. Well? Be patient. Other people can still audition. Wrong file, ya. Wrong file. Holy monkey in hell! Yo, Lampy is awesome! You got Lampy for sure, George! What the? I chose the Mabel! People can audition for the same role. Really? Ralph, auditions are for everybody, not just you. Well, okay then, Leaf Razor. Ta-da! I did my best! That is all. I just did my role. Enough said. Okay, we get it. You audition. And of course, when this person didn't get the role, it got kind of ugly. I was not Mabel. That's sad. So I failed? Which means an ultimate silly songs countdown abridged. Ralph, just because you audition doesn't mean you're entitled to a role. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? Jeez, dude. Can you chill out? You expect a role that you thought you were entitled to, threaten him, and still expect to have the role. No one feels bad for you, and even if we did, there's still the next audition. How has Ralph not been kicked from the server yet? Beats me. I probably had the cringiest audition, and I'm not crying about me not getting the role. It's not a bad thing to be sad. That's just human nature. But you don't have to throw a pity party about it. I was disappointed, but I just accepted and looked forward to the future. But now, because of your behavior and actions, there's almost 0% chance of you being involved at all. If you want some feedback for your audition, just ask Trevor for some. So I mean, that's your problem now, don't be so entitled. Odds are that he'll tell you what you need to do to get in. Except no! And that's basically what happened from there. The guy got kicked out within a week, but I think you can get it from there. So yeah, a lot of the fandom started splintering at this point. No one really had a concise view of where they wanted VeggieTales Abridged to go. Some wanted it to be sillier, some wanted it to be more serious, some wanted it to go wherever I wanted it to go and then they'd react accordingly. Some wanted it to be more like My Little Pony, some wanted it to be more like the original VeggieTales. Everyone seemed to have a different view. And of course, only one, if any, could get their way. So with this weird middling reception from everybody, not knowing where they want the show to go, more Puppet Master, less Puppet Master, keep going with whatever you want, I decided that we should make an episode that would appease everybody. It'll have the story, it'll have the political jokes, and by political jokes I mean old political jokes so that it can't offend anybody. I mean, who's gonna be offended by a Bob Dole joke in this day and age? It'll have the story, it'll have dark themes, and that's where Dole's Revenge came out. Once again, 7 out of 10. This is one of the last episodes I'm really proud of. But it was so hard to make this one. I went through 12 drafts of the script for Dole's Revenge because I was so stressed out. I wanted to make this the most crowd-pleasing, the most well-received episode ever. It had to have a gigantic widespread appeal, otherwise it would be a failure. Yeah, it got to that point. The Rabbids were not helping with getting even more impatient. Yeah, despite the fact that these episodes were able to be produced about once a month now, they started getting even worse. Now they were expecting them to come out every day, which wasn't gonna happen. So let me get this straight. We go from producing an episode every four to five months to every month, and now you think that that means we can produce them every day because now they're going faster. And they were getting very loud and angry. There would be 
giant chains about how they're waiting for episodes with people coming back in every day to report how eager they are for the next episode to come out and that I need to hurry up. And even at this point, they'd start going to other videos of mine and start asking when the next episode of VeggieTales of Bridge is coming out. So picture this. I have this review that I'm trying to make for TV Talks. I am hoping that it's going to be pretty well received because TV Talks has been tanking in the views lately. So I make this episode, and the only comments I get are when is the next episode of VeggieTales Abridged or you should be making VeggieTales Abridged and not this. It makes you feel great. It makes you feel really, really great. But Dole's Revenge did end up getting the reception I was hoping for. People thought it was hilarious. People thought the story was really starting to get interesting now, and they didn't know where it was going to go from here. The Puppet Master had finally erased Bob and Larry at this point, so now what was going to happen? What would become of VeggieTales Abridged? The answer was Fiat Recast Spectacular. This episode was all about the Puppet Master auditioning new people for the role of Bob and Larry. In other words, he needed a new host for VeggieTales Abridged, so he was auditioning different people. And everyone hated it. They hated that Bob and Larry weren't there, and that's about it. They didn't like that there wasn't any Bob and Larry, so automatically the episode is terrible. I mean, the episode isn't even good. I'd give it like a 5 out of 10, and that's being generous. But holy crap, just because Bob and Larry aren't in the episode doesn't automatically mean it's the worst thing ever. For days after this, I kept getting flamed and getting angry messages from people saying, The next episode needs to be better. Great. Fiat Recast Spectacular was the last time I ever had a moderate to neutral view on making the show. It was the last time any semblance of fun was had. Dole's Revenge was at least fun because everyone liked it, even though producing the episode was very stressful. However, this one was kind of a neutral process when it came to production, and then when it came out, I was bummed out. The rabbits were taking over, so I didn't know what to do. Except for make episode 23, Wada Lada Leedaloo. I didn't actually intend for that rhyme, but here it is in the script, and I'm happy with that, so I'm gonna keep it. In order to find some love for the show again, I wanted to make something new, something distinct, something unique, something more adult. So I started watching more Drawn Together and Futurama to try to emulate some of that humor and put it into VeggieTales Abridged. Of course, it wouldn't be a complete overhaul. I just put a little bit of that in there, and the next few episodes would kind of be finding the footing, a lot like what episode 10 was for the tone of the show. How was that received? Well, find out in a moment, because once I sent that off, I started thinking, you know, VeggieTales Abridged is so stupid and wacky, I need to do something a lot more thought-provoking to keep myself sane. TV Talks isn't really doing it for me, I need to step up my game. I was watching some TV trash and he was talking about Baby Blues. That's one of my personal favorite reviews of his, and I thought, you know what? I'm judging the show purely off of what he says. If I really want to have an actual opinion about the show, I need to go check it out for myself. And I did, and I thought, this would be the perfect TV Talks video if TV Talks wasn't already cancelled. But I had to talk about it in some way, shape, or form. I couldn't let my brand new Baby Blues knowledge go to the wayside. And that, my friends, was the creation of the very first Media Mementos video ever, Baby Blues. Brilliant or Betrayal, yes. It was created not just for me to have a platform to speak my mind, but also because VeggieTale was so soul-suckingly stupid that I needed something more intellectually stimulating. And it came out, and people loved it. Only one person commented when's the next episode of VeggieTales a bridge, so I'd consider that a success. I just kept making those more and more and more, and putting more focus on those over VeggieTales Abridged. Meanwhile, as the next few reviews were coming out, Wada Lada Leedaloo was all set to premiere, and it did not do well. Don't get me wrong, it did very well with views, but people were like, eh, it's too adult now, don't, don't. There also was the awkward song at the end that people didn't really like either. And they also were starting to get annoyed with the fact that there wasn't enough Larry in the episode, even though he was in 80% of it. I actually had to get onto my Discord server and just talk to people after that because I was so annoyed with the rabbits at this point. And no, I couldn't just ignore those people because they were basically everybody. And since Wada Lada Leedaloo came out, that's where a bunch of rabbits started jumping into the old TAS Productions Discord server and just begged, pleaded for VeggieTales Abridged episodes to come out. 
So there literally was no escape. So I tried to come up with some more ideas on how to keep people entertained and I decided to act on one of the ideas I had all the way back in February of that year. I wanted to make an episode of VeggieTales Abridged that was all about the VBS programs and it would be Bob and Larry going to different states in the United States having crazy 30 second adventures and they would be VeggieTales Abridged Summer Vacation. And instead of one episode, I decided to make it a mini series and oh. Uh... It was painful. I didn't realize how hard it would be to have to write segments for all 50 states. They all basically ended up becoming the same exact thing. Bob and Larry are at a state, Larry says something stupid, Bob corrects him, then they talk a bit about the state and then leave. Every single one of the regular casual fans hated it. And I myself hated it too. I was so upset that I made this. I acted way too quickly. I made this because I wanted the fans to have more stupid, I guess, or more humor to counteract the incoming story-heavy episodes. And I didn't care for it at all. It was unbelievably difficult to make these. Zero out of ten. Would not recommend. And personally, I just tried to forget that these things ever happened. But the Rabbids sure liked them because they were silly and stupid. That's when I realized I could make literally anything, and as long as Larry was in 100% of the video, and preferably with Bob too, people would love it. That's all. That's all it had to be. So, I kinda short-circuited. That's when I ended up making episode 24, Uncle Stumbly's Frog Farm. 2 out of 10. I didn't know what I was doing with this one. I was so burnt out, I just slapped together a first draft, recorded it, sent it away, hoping to never think about it again. I was stressed out because I was working in a U.S. Senator's office, I won't say whose, and I was also disappointed with the way the channel was going. VeggieTales Abridged was literally taking over anything. Whenever I tried to make anything non-VeggieTales Abridged related, it was always shafted and or filled with comments of people begging for more episodes of VeggieTales Abridged. I was trapped. There was nowhere I could go. And it got me feeling really down, and I felt unbelievably unmotivated to make anything. VeggieTales Abridged, Live and Reloaded, anything. And it was around this time when I sat down and talked with Reziel over the phone. Yes, another Patreon patron. So what? They're my friends. They're great people. And they give me money, so of course I like them. And he helped me realize that VeggieTales Abridged was the problem. I think deep down I always knew this. I mean, I had to have. Every time something like this happened, I'd always groan internally. But I couldn't deny it anymore. VeggieTales Abridged was just unbearable. I made this comparison in a video that I'll talk about shortly, but it was a lot like what happened with Ralph at the time, Big Head, when he was making Wacky Deli. He hated Wacky Deli, he put no effort into it, but everyone loved it anyways, and when he made the one thing that he actually wanted to dedicate his life to, nobody cared. I was in the exact same position, and it tore me up inside. So I made this video called VeggieTales Abridged vs. TAS Productions, and all the casual people understood, but the Rabbids did not care. They still kept going on and on and on. In fact, I think that video even made them worse. Actually, scratch that, I know it made them worse because I made a part two where I say exactly that. I thought things would get better, but it didn't. Things got worse. People seem to have misconstrued that as, he doesn't think people like the show. Let's make sure that that's reinforced. This was also the night that a rabbit broke into the Discord server, kept screaming, basically, because it was in all caps, about how the reviews were pointless and that all I'm good for is VTA. Their words, not mine. We have witnesses to back this up. So I was just done. I was fed up. I wanted VeggieTales Abridged gone. And I didn't know how I was going to do it except for put it on a hiatus, I guess. I was thinking over ways to get the show done once VeggieTales Abridged Summer Vacation was through. And yes, for those of you who haven't watched the How Whacked Saved Me to Mementos video, this is the point. This is where I was making Whacked, felt VeggieTales Abridged was going to kill any other review I had, including the Whacked one, which I put lots and lots of blood, sweat, and tears into. So I had to boot it onto another channel, which at the time was called No Name Thing, but it's now called Montague's Pickle Stand, better known as Media Mementos. This is the point of no return. I had to be done. And when we were talking at one point with a bunch of rabbits that broke into the server, Rezio and a couple of the other actors and producers sat me down and said, it's time to stop. 
the show needs to end. And I couldn't agree more. I still can't even. And I thank each and every one of those people that was involved with that call for helping me realize that VeggieTales Abridged was just this completely unbearable burden in my life that needed to be removed. So I got my writer's hatchet, hacked the rest of the story to bits, and stitched them all together in the last two episodes. We were rushing the rest of the story arc, all for the sake of getting this thing done. And I didn't care. I did not care. I didn't care if the story had any flow, if it was funny. I didn't care at all. Nothing could have changed my mind. I was ready to be done. And that's where VeggieTales Abridged Episode 25, Uh-Oh, came out. Uh-Oh was a big episode in many ways. First of all, it was extremely passive-aggressive towards the rabbits who, well, I think you know what they were doing here, and it flew over about half of their heads. Some of them got it, others did not. But also, it was a retribution for a lot of people here on the show. For me, it was a way to finally make something more grounded, showing people that I'm not just about humor. I can do more than that. And it was also a good retribution for Billy H.L., also known as George. Because all the people seemed to just call him George, and whenever he would show up anywhere, they'd say, Hey, do the George voice, or hey, roleplay as George. And it was kind of giving him a lesser degree of what I have. Everyone viewed him as just the character that he played, causing him to end up resenting it entirely. I don't blame him. I would have done the same thing. In fact, I did, because people were treating me like Larry from VeggieTales Abridged, saying that, oh, you're the wacky, silly, goofy guy, and that's all you're really good for. Again, their words, not mine. So I, too, began to resent the character and the show itself. And uh-oh, definitely proved that. The story was in full gear now. Everyone was ready to see what was going to happen in the grand finale. VeggieTales Abridged, post-game, which was where everything would all end. I'd give both of these episodes 9 out of 10, by the way, because I'm legitimately proud of these two. I think the story had a good flow to it. I think that you can actually feel for the characters for once. And it was a nice conclusion. Post-game had some legitimately funny moments. I'm in limbo. It's kind of nice here, but there's not as many limbo games as I c expected. But Famine, destruction, and plague ravish my subconscious. And my only escape is to cry myself to sleep. The story was pretty gripping, I gotta say, and... Believe it or not, a lot of people got really sad at the end, like, kind of, actually, it's, it's true. People told me that themselves. I think it was a combination of the music that was used for the credits and also the fact that the show caused a lot of destruction and, well, people did like it. As harmful as it was to a lot of people, it still resonated with a lot of folks and they were sorry to see it go, especially under the pretenses. And then we decided to make Standard Misadventures, also known as Dorland Misadventures, which was kind of a spiritual successor to VeggieTales Live and Reloaded in an extremely loose way. My friend Kyle and I had created this idea for a Christian children's show way back in 2015, and we felt that now was the time to rebrand the channel and finally go for it. So with moving on to this brand new era, obviously that means that's the end for the rabbits, right? Ha <laughs> ha wrong, no. They kept coming in asking for spin-offs, and revivals, and reboots, and all these other things. They just would not let it go. So, I had to keep dealing with those people. Although, I will say, the number of rabbits at that time was a lot fewer, so I was very thankful for that. Even so, they were still getting really, really annoying, and as time went on, I started having a little bit more of a critical eye towards VeggieTales Abridged. And no, it wasn't influenced by emotions or anything, I just legitimately went back to look at a lot of those episodes and realized, this crap isn't funny. I, I don't see how I ever thought a lot of this was funny, it's just random for the sake of random, and I hate that stuff. So I began just not wanting to acknowledge VeggieTales Abridged's existence at all. I mean, why would I want to? I had another project I was working on, and Media Mementos was growing like crazy. But then, we started getting some messages from some of the people involved. Again, we'll not name names, but they wanted to be redubbed in the show, because they either wanted no connection with VeggieTales-related things, or they were ashamed of their performance, or just various personal reasons. One of them I legitimately did get a little concerned for, although now I learned that they are perfectly fine, so I'm happy about that. And if we did end up redubbing them, we'd basically have to post about half the episodes all over again. And I did not 
want to go back to that. I did not see that as worth it at all. So given the fact that a lot of people wanted to pull out, again, one that I was quite concerned for at the time, but again, they're fine now, have to make that very clear, and the fact that barely anybody was even proud of the show or really liked it, or at least any of the people that worked on it that didn't want to be removed, and the fact that it brought up just a ton of negative memories for me, and that I didn't even like it anymore, I unlisted all the episodes. They are all on private now. People were freaking out. All the rabbits came back out of the woodworks, but at that point, I didn't care. They weren't my audience anymore. I don't think they ever were really fans of mine to begin with. They just wanted me for the show, not for me or what else I could offer. So, down went the episodes, never to be seen again. Rabbits have tried to post them since, but their channels mysteriously disappear after I issue the copyright complaint. So, yeah. And if you're wondering if I'm ever going to make them public again, no, this is the closest you're going to get. Sorry. VeggieTales Abridged is a relic of the past and it should stay exactly that. It wasn't even that good to begin with. I will say though, it did get me to where I am today, so I in no way regret making it. It helped me learn how to write better. It got me to meet a ton of new people, including one that helped make Media Mementos what it is today. I wouldn't have met one of my best friends if it wasn't for this. So... Yeah, I am happy that I made it. Am I happy with the way that the rabbits acted? No, I don't think anyone is except for them, because to this day, some of them still don't understand what they did was wrong. VeggieTales of Bridge started off as this fun project that quickly went way out of control, and then just became unbearable for everyone involved. Only existing to serve a toxic minority. And even still, on some of the very few VeggieTales of Bridge related things that are still around, I am looking at some of these comments and I can still find some of the rabbits that I didn't delete. Like this one, whose name is censored of course, on VeggieTales Abridged vs. TAS Productions Part 2, where they're basically just advertising their show. Yeah, that was great. But this does serve as a lesson for not just me, but the rest of you too. Don't be afraid to think for yourself. Don't be afraid to stand up for yourself. Yes, it's important to please others and to make others happy, but you won't be able to do that if you yourself aren't happy. I'm not saying that you need to be selfish and think about yourself first, but you do need to think about your happiness and your mental health. You can't let something this arbitrary take over your life and just ruin all of your prospects and your motivation. You need to find a way out if that's the case. And if there's ever anything like that, please speak up. Because if you stay silent, nothing's going to get better. You can't do it alone, people. I know I couldn't. And that there is the story of VeggieTales Abridged. But just because this show is gone forever doesn't mean that I don't have any more creative output. Billy and I have some projects we're working on. Quite a few of them, in fact. Some alone and some together. Like, he's working on this graphic novel about angels, and trust me, this thing's gonna be really something special. I've got this book series I'm trying to get published mainstream rather than just Amazon about a poor family in Alabama that's trying to get by called The Rich Family. And like I mentioned, we're collaborating on a lot of projects like our combined efforts to make this graphic novel called Armin Greeley, Soldier of Fortune, about this greasy, miserly man that's trying to get a penny and ends up going on this insane fantasy expedition but doesn't seem to care about it at all. What about Urban Dwellers, a show about monsters that are just trying to get by, get through life, and of course, survive the sun. There's Foul Manor, which is currently going through some reworking right now, so more on that another day, and many, many more things. Yes, VTA was awful, but in a way, it set us up for these, and we're sure these are gonna be hits, or at least good. Well, folks, thanks for watching the video. What'd you guys think? Have you seen VeggieTales Abridged before? Have you ever dealt with a VTA rabid? Or have you dealt with a rabbit of any show? And if you're a rabbit or former rabbit, are you regretful of your actions? Comment below and let me know because I'm always excited to hear what you guys have to say. Real quick, I'd like to thank our Patreon executive producers, Reziel, Leaf Razor, you guys were mentioned in this video, eh, eh, Sophie Burgers, Tanner Kapischke, and Azarius. If you two would like your name read at the end of every Media Mementos video, then consider donating to our Patreon, which has a link in the description below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. I need to get some water. Wow, my throat is sore.